Hello, everyone, and welcome again to another episode of Latin American Directions. My name is Nicholas Sussman, and today we have two stellar guests, Maria Jose Medina and Francisco Torres, to speak about an exciting and very interesting topic of social entrepreneurship and their very interesting project, Lucha. Maria Jose, Francisco, welcome to Latin American Directions. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you very much for having us. We're really excited to be here. Great. So let's get started. Uh, social entrepreneurship, right? It's a good concept. It sounds interesting, uh, but it really doesn't tell what it entails, right? Uh, so I don't know, Maria Jose, could you tell us what social entrepreneurship is? Of course. Um, well, how we understand it, I think it's a pretty broad concept, but um, how Francisco and I and a lot of people that we've been talking with here in Latin America, uh, we understand it as this concept of people just putting all their efforts into a um, type of business model or entrepreneurship in that sense uh, with a social cause. So basically what we do is kind of, you know, organize a whole enterprise or organization that works for us, but also has a social cause behind. And that's its main motor. We don't make money off of our causes. Um, let's say that the results that we seek are, are, earnings at the end of the day. So that's how I would define it, basically. Right. Uh, and then how we would, would we differentiate this uh, from concepts such as charities, nonprofit work, and, and so on? What's the key about entrepreneurship, uh, social entrepreneurship, Francisco? I would say that the key difference between, you know, Lucha as a social entrepreneurship project with, you know, charity instances is that in social entrepreneurship, we see everyone as equal, you know, within charity, there's this, you know, hierarchy where there's someone who has more power, who is in a position of, you know, uh, having control over another individual and within social entrepreneurship, what we want to do is create a positive social instance that is based on the understanding that we are all equal and there's no one who needs uh, our help in you know, this colonial and paternalistic way of you know, analyzing charity. Right, right, that's, that's really interesting. Uh, so basically it gives a whole turn to the social component of, I don't know if this is the right way to call it, but about helping people instead of helping keep people, I would say it's about empowering people, right? And working together and put efforts together, which I, I think is really interesting. Uh, let's, now let's talk a bit about Lucha. What's, what is Lucha, Maria Jose? Well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I would define Lucha as a project that seeks to provide a service to young girls in Colombia, especially in Swacha, uh, a very vulnerable community that it has been touched a lot by violence and poverty um, throughout many years. And we seek to provide services of education for preparation for state um, exams and basically school admission exams um, for girls that are in their final age of high school education so that they can enter um, these institutions without any issues and actually achieve a sustainable future in education. Right. Well, that's that's really great. But I also know that Lucha has a bit of history behind. Uh, so Francisco, can you tell us a bit about that history? I know you were very involved with the idea and then, I don't know, Maho jumped on it and you built something really great together. So could you tell us about the origin of Lucha, the backstory, how you thought this is the thing I want to do, this is the, the communities I think we need to empower. So uh, Lucha, burn, you know, it uh, starts to exist uh, from an already existing NGO that is called Niña Sin Miedo. Niña Sin Miedo works in La Comuna Cuatro of Suacha, which Suacha is one of Colombia's biggest slums. It is, you know, a part of our geography that has a lot of social issues. It has cycles of poverty. And one of the main issues that concerned uh, this NGO, Niña Sin Miedo, is that uh, La Comuna Cuatro of Suacha has one of the highest rates of teenage pregnancy. 
So they wanted to address this issue by empowering girls through uh, sexual education programs and teaching them how to ride their bikes as a way of empowering them and teaching them that they can buy their own uh, ways, uh, you know, reach anywhere they want in life. And I've been a volunteer of Niña Sin Miedo for over two years. My One of my older sisters, she took me to Niña Sin Miedo when I was still in high school. Uh, so for a very long time, I have created this strong uh, emotional um, connections with members of the community. And I've come to realize uh, something that should have been very clear to me a long time ago and is how systematic our social issues are. You know, poverty uh, is not a choice and these cycles of poverty need to be addressed in a way that empowers the community and makes them know that we coexist in a system that is unfair and, you know, poverty is in not a way, uh, in any way their fault. And Lucha, uh, it was born from a conversation I had with one of those girls and uh, I came to realize, uh, you know, how privileged I was as entering university from someone who is privileged in Bogota, Colombia's capital city is pretty easy, but for these girls in, in Swacha, uh, it is, you know, a miracle to get into a university because of the systematic um, discrimination they suffer, you know, because of class, gender, and also in some cases, race. Uh, so Lucha is a way by which we wanted to give the privilege that we as, you know, privileged people from Bogota had give them to these girls in Swacha, which is the preparation uh, to excel in the exams that assure you to, you know, enter the university of your choice. Right. But, and, and why did you choose to focus on, on that aspect, right? You were speaking about Niña Sin Miedo, just for audience, it's the translation of uh, Girls Without Fear. Uh, they decided to go for the uh, riding bikes approach, right, uh, as a sign of empowerment. Uh, and that was their thing, right? And if you could tell us a bit about that one, as you were also part of that, and, and understand the correlationship about something that seems that simple as riding a bike and, uh, well, a significant and, and impactful issues such as being pregnancy that, as you said, say, uh, contributes to inequality, contributes to marginalization. And then if that model had something to do with the focus you chose for Lucha, right? Because you chose one specific aspect of the many aspects uh, involved, right? Uh, so I would like to know, one, uh, the logic perhaps behind the, the bike example in, in uh, um, Niña Sin Miedo, and then if this was a reference for you on why you chose to go for uh, education and admission into universities, specifically the, the standardized test, which for reference is similar to the SAT to some degree in the, in the US. Uh, so yeah, if you choose, wh whoever wants to tell us about that or or you take turns, that, that is fine. It's just very interested in knowing the story behind all this, right? Um. Yeah, of course. Uh, Francis, if you want, you can start telling about the bikes. Uh, I feel like that's more of your expertise. And then we'll talk more about um, the exams and how that correlates. Okay. Uh, so actually, I'm a volunteer. Uh, in Niña Semillo, we have two big groups of volunteering. There's the bicycle group and there's the education group. And, you know, I, I think it's kind of funny, but I am a volunteer at the bicycle uh, at the bicycle part of the uh, NGO, uh, we are called Bici Mentores, which is kind of like bike tutors. And I, I feel that, um, you know, the reasons why Niña Sin Miedo uh, has such an important emphasis on bicycles is because of the, of the message it has regarding how when we teach uh, a young girl how to ride their bike, we are not just teaching her, you know, a new way of transportation. We are teaching her that by her own means, she can get anywhere she wants in life. You know, knowing how to ride a bike means a girl can go anywhere she wants to by herself. 
and that for me as Inero, we believe um well within the institution it is believed that that is a synonym of empowering and we work with girls uh last saturday i was in the group of little girls and we have girls from seven to 12 years old and this saturday we will be working with girls from 13 to 17 years old and i feel that this is an already proven methodology i know that niñas miedo uh follows the example of already existing ngos in the dominican republic and the us and we know that bicycles are a way to empower uh, young women but also bicycles i believe are crucial within this organization um, because they are a way to make sure that girls stay within this organization. So a weekend we have bicycles and the next weekend we have the education programs where uh, you know teachers uh, discuss with girls a broad range of topics from menstruation to uh, consent, uh, which are really important, but a way that we assure that girls stay in the organization is if we have the bike program, you know, because they like it, they have fun with their friends, so they stay in the organization, and that's a way that we can assure that, you know, these girls can, you know, have information uh, about, you know, um, important topics such as, you know, sexual education. And I feel that it is really connected to Lucha because as the bike, we want to teach girls that they can reach anywhere they want in their lives. We feel that education is kind of like a bicycle. A girl can get whatever she when can get anywhere she wants in life with a bike geographically, but with education she can also do that, but in a way more, you know, transcendental and um higher scale uh aspect. Right, right. And now let's speak about this, this uh, standardized test, the state tests, and why they're an obstacle, right? Because I think that's not just a problem of the Colombian system, but I, I would say of many systems, right? These exams for many people from a privileged background, I'm speaking now about the Colombian case, are seen as easy exams to some degree. You can get high scores uh, without much effort. There's not a lot of preparation and going. And as you start moving from very privileged uh, schools to less privileged schools to marginalized and public schools, uh, well, you start seeing that the test becomes a challenge, right? Uh, so, so I would like to know your experience on that. Why did you decide to focus on that? And uh, I don't know, not choose other issues of education that you could have to, to also support this community. Uh, so, so Maria Jose, if you can tell us about it, please. Yeah, of course. Um, so when we started thinking about Lucha and what we wanted to do, we, wanted, we knew that it, we wanted to do something that was very simple, but that was very on target to the problem. Um, so we started talking and this conversation that came up with, between Francisco and Mariana, which is our inspiration, basically. Um, we also realized that Many of these girls, no matter what they do, no matter how many initiatives they're involved in, how many NGOs are helping them, they still don't have the preparation to take these sort of exams. And as we know, many of us who have taken either SATs or exams in Colombia or the equivalent in any other country know that the main thing you need to know is how to take the exam, even more than the contents of it. It's more about how to answer and how to know how to read the questions. So um, we know that many of these girls don't have the access to preparation for these exams because the access that um, public schools give is not even half as good as the one that a kid could reach in a private institution. Um, so we wanted to kind of erase that um, gap between kids in private schools and in public schools and give them a proper service um, that is funded, that is completely free for them. Um, and that is actually given by people who know how to take this test and know how uh, to work the system, let's say, and actually get them into school. Um, so we thought it was a barrier that many um, educational institutions in Colombia overlook, but it's actually a really big issue. And it makes a lot of sense to actually work that specific um, exam and then see the results in a very short term of time. Right. 
Right, and just as a, as a follow-up question, uh, have you already seen a difference of what you've done through Lucha, or do we remain to see the results, as I know that you're a rather new organization, right? Yeah, um, we're going to start with our pilot program just this semester. We're actually still in preparation. Uh, we have currently our group of volunteers, and we're still in the whole, um, let's say, institutional process of funding a, a social venture project. So we have to get all our papers in check and work some tax issues with our funders um, up in New York. But yeah, we're still in process of beginning this semester. It's going to be our pilot program. So we're planning to have results um, by next semester. Fortunately um, for us, I'm a government student, so I basically focus on studying if these programs work or not. And we've been designing a way of kind of seeing if there's a way for us to make a impact a study and see if these um, actually have results in the short term. Right. Uh, so, and as part of this preparation, Francisco, I would like to know if you have already engaged with the uh, with the groups you're going to work on. You already told them that this is coming, and and what's their expectation, their reaction? Uh, how how that how's that part of the well of the people preparation side, not not just the the admin side. Something that I feel we are absolutely proud about Lucha is that Lucha is not a creation that comes uniquely from privileged students. Because that is that is what we are. That's what we in Maho are. Uh, we can, you know, visit this community, but at the end of the day, we are never going to truly and fully understand the life situation of the people in La Comuna Cuatro of Suacha. And that's why we believe it is so fundamental and so crucial to actively involve the community within, you know, every process that takes place within Lucha. So uh, I've, I've found a really great support within one of the leaders of this community. Her name is Luz and Luz, uh, she helps in Niña Sin Miedo and she's someone that I absolutely admire. And from the community, she's someone that throughout the years I've come to form uh, a special relationship with, and uh, she is a mother. She actually is the mother of Mariana, one of the girls of Niña Sin Miedo, and she has helped us, you know, to uh, tell the community, to tell other moms about this opportunity of having a free preparation for the uh, state exams, and uh, now we have uh, 12 girls already signed up uh, to be part of, you know, this project. And in fact, uh, the 24th of September, we're going to have our first Lucha session where what we want to do is uh, present the girls with our teachers, the volunteers, and, uh, you know, have, uh, have this space where girls can tell us what they expect, you know, what they want out of Lucha. Because we don't want to, uh, you know, create this, a social entrepreneurship idea as something that has a hierarchy, as something that we impose to the community. We want something, uh, we want Lucha to be a space where girls actively participate and, you know, create uh, among with us something that can beneficiate uh, the community. Right. Right. Well, that's, that's amazing. Now let's speak about your journey of success, right? And let's speak about the resolution projects part of that. So for our audience, uh, Francisco and, and Maria Jose met uh, in the Model, Uni Model United Nations team at the Universidad de los Andes that competes in the Harvard National Model United Nations, which is, I would say, the biggest, if not one of the biggest conferences of, of Model United Nations worldwide. But they decided not only to go and do the competition, simulating that they were delegates from different countries, but they decided to put uh, their energy, their preparation, and their effort into creating a social venture project that is funded by, I, I believe this is a nonprofit, a philanthropist organization called the, the Resolution Project. Uh, and they won, actually. They won. Uh, so... I just want to give you this space, uh, Maria Jose and Francisco, to tell us about your experience, what the Resolution Project is, and how you came with this idea to, you decided to participate, 
and well, you decided to to start with Lucha as 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 your resolution project. Yeah, of course. Um, well, first, I I would like to say that it started all very fast. It was kind of um, very very quickly how we came up with Lucha and how we decided to take the leap into participating into such a big I don't know challenge for both of us because neither of us have had the experience of you know starting up social venture before or even funding our own organization or enterprise. So um, I actually met Francisco last year. We've been friends now for over a year and we're really close. Um, and I met him because I was actually coordinating the team that was going to participate in Harvard um, UN. I was going to be the leader of the team and kind of training them throughout the entire year. And then Francisco and I got to talking, we got really close and we got to know each other and see what we were interested in. We're both interested in topics really related to social ventures, anthropology, um, government, seeing how we can improve our communities and the problems that we have here in our country, especially in our city. So uh, we got to talking and uh, I presented him with this opportunity with for the resolution project and I asked him if he knew of any issues that he wanted to solve and that I could help him with. And he said, of course, I'm actually working with Niña Sin Miedo. I met Mariana. This is what's going on here. We need to help these girls. And it's actually not very hard if you really think about it. So um, we decided to take on the challenge. And then in a matter of weeks, we put it, we put it together. We talked to everyone um, and we managed to win in the social venture um, challenge. That's how they call it at the resolution project. We had over, I don't know, Francisco, like over 20 participants of different ventures and we won. Uh, we were one of the many winners of that day and we got the grant, which is more than $4,000 um, in money for us to start our venture. So it was a really great opportunity. We got a lot of visibility. And also, you know, it was a great way to start the venture. Not a lot of NGOs or social ventures can say that they started with um, this amount of money um, to begin with. So we're really grateful for, for the opportunity. And it was actually really fun. It was in a matter of days. The competition was really hard. We had a lot of sleepless nights, but we did it. And we're really happy to, like, have done it because now we're here and we're actually going to see how this impacts the lives of girls, which is what really matters to us. Right, and and I think now I'm going to ask perhaps the hardest question of of of, of the show, and it's what do you think made you win? What was the key to your success? Uh, and I would say, what's the key to the success of Lucha? Right, why they chose you over over other projects, and then why should other investors? choose you over over other other ventures or at least just see the value in yours right yeah. i feel that something that uh i'm sorry something no, that, really, that really differentiated us from other uh, ventures is that we constructed a program along the community you know i feel that that's something that sounds so easy but it's so hard to have you know, the confidence, the trust from a vulnerable community, you know, to, to have this uh, real, um, you know, connections that are, you know, just emotional. And that is a plus that, you know, makes sure that, you know, a venture will, you know, last through time. And also a point that I believe uh, was crucial to our success is that we built Lucha not only you know with the community but also we had a really strong uh, interest on incorporating uh, academic uh, conclusions within our project we investigated a lot especially on studies published by the national university of colombia regarding how those access to higher education in colombia work and you know there's this uh data analysis of, you know, this long period of time that came to the conclusion that in Colombia, access to university uh, has a discrimination based on class, gender, and race. It is absolutely more likely to access a university in Colombia uh, if you have money, if you are a man, and if you are not a member of a racialized community. And, you know, Swacha is uh, a community, is a slum 
that has been built upon the internal displacement of people in the Colombian armed conflict. So we have this community where you can find a lot of people who are racialized in Swatcha. There's a high percentage of people uh, you know, who are Afro-Colombian citizens. And, you know, Nina Sin Miedo, we work with uh, impoverished girls. So we have, you know, the subjects who have been recognized by uh, academic studies as the most vulnerable uh, individuals within our uh, educational system. So, you know, after starting these conclusions and, you know, having this personal connection with the community, we came with the, you know, idea of building Lucha as a way of, you know, having the community and building this project with them and also gathering the academic conclusions in order to build, you know, this, this program that wants, you know, to be uh, a way by which we denormalize how unfair uh, the system we exist in is. Right. So, so you think, well, my, my, I could tip my hat to you because this is a serious and well thought and project, a project that goes to the root causes of all this. Maria Jose, we're in the last minute of, of our show and I would just like to give you the opportunity to speak to our audience, to speak to potential donors and to use this way uh, to gather support for Lucha. I'm in in supporting you, uh, but I would like to give you the chance to do your elevator pitch, your fundraising pitch uh, for audience out there, because this is worth supporting uh, as well as other Latin American social ventures, right? Solutions from Latin America, Latin America that have, that have an impact. So yeah, the floor is yours for this last minute. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say, um, first of all, thank you for having us. We're really excited and Thank you for giving us especially the opportunity to come forward and tell how important it is for girls to be educated, especially in Latin America. Um, as everyone knows, for now, we are a very new venture. So we're starting a new crowdfunding for the funding for the next semesters that are coming up and for many expenses that we're gonna have to cover. Um, the link is gonna be in the description of the talk show. So please, um, even if it's just a small donation, um, it's going to help us a lot and it's going to be reflected directly on the lives of these girls that are going to be educated by us. Um, and yeah, let's just keep on working and see what happens. And of course, um, follow us as well on social media. We're going to be posting our first sessions, um, how the classes are going. You guys are going to get to meet the girls and kind of see very closely how this process is going to impact the community. And hopefully we can gain um, more and more traction and see how other ventures want to join together um, and create a bigger impact here in, in Colombia and hopefully in Latin America. So yeah, that would be my final invitation. Um, get to know us, donate if you can, whatever you can, and also try to support your local uh, social ventures, even if it's just around the corner, there's always someone trying to help it, um, the community. So just, um, keep a look an eye out for that because it's really important for us and and we're really happy to be here as well thank you very much for hosting us of course thank you francisco thank you maria jose to our audience thank you for your attention keep an eye out on those on these people because they're going to make a difference and we'll see each other in two weeks this was latin american directions thank you Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.